Hi, Dr. Mindy Curry here. I'm a naturopathic doctor in Portland, Oregon. Well, I do house calls in the greater Portland area, and I have a, a clinic in Milwaukee. And I'm here today, as usual, to uh, tell you about an herb that I think you all should be looking for and making into medicine on your own. This is a great um, opportunity to make your own medicine. This is Grindelia. This is a Grindelia that I got uh, a long time ago, <laughs> several years ago at least, from a from an herbalist that was selling herbs. Um, might have been strictly medicinals. I'm not sure right now, but uh, basically, I put this plant. It was a little tiny plant. I put it in a big pot full of sand. And it's just been growing here like crazy, and it's now a monster. Now, Grindelia is, tends to be a coastal plant in this area. It grows um, from Oregon up to Washington, up to British Columbia, mostly along the co coast in wetlands um, and marshes, salt marshes. Um, I mostly have seen this growing wild up at Puget Sound. And out there, it's just beautiful. But it seems like it, I've always seen it shorter in nature. But this one is just a monster. It's just grown crazy. And it keeps coming back every year. And basically, what Grindelia is really great at, it's a couple things that I think of most. It's that it's an expectorant. Um, also very sedating and soothing for the respiratory tract. So I think of Grindelia as being really great for bronchitis and asthma and emphysema. Mostly I use this in bronchitis formulas. It's something I add to formulas, not something I usually use alone. But it's also really great for um, poison oak. If you've got a really bad poison oak rash, a tincture of this uh, there's a little formula I like to use. It's a little bit different, but it includes a uh, Grindelia tincture. It is also really great for soothing that pain and itch of poison oak. It doesn't take it away altogether, but it certainly uh, makes it a little bit more manageable. So the Grindelia that grows from Oregon up to Washington to Puget Sound, that's the Grindelia integrifolia. I'm not completely sure if this one is that or not. I don't see a tag, but some of the things to look for are these elongated heart-shaped leaves up at the top and uh, alternating leaves. And it's part of the sunflower family and it, it kind of looks like a little tiny sunflower. Now what's really great about these guys, what's more, more exciting is that they um, make this wonderful kind of resiny sap that's especially um, plentiful in the buds, the little unopened buds. What you really want to find is a bunch of these like little sap buds. Um, but also you can use the flowers themselves into making a nice medicine. And um, let's see. What I like to do mostly is tincture this. But you can use this as a tea um, you can do other preparations as well. It's really great for skin conditions in general, for any kind of rash or, or kind of healing of the skin. It's also known to be great for the heart. So if you got somebody who has problems with heart conditions, plus say bronchitis or asthma or emphysema, this is a really great one to target that. Um, so basically what I'm gonna do is grab a jar and just directly I don't want to wash these because if you wash those all that sap is gonna just wash right off let's get in here and take a little bit of a better look at these here they are the grindelia in flower and you want it to be in flower and you want those unopened buds with their ooey gooey stuff right there, all that white stuff in the middle. That's the medicine. This one is really pretty perfect. That's just really gooey, very resinous. These flowers are lovely. 
Now I've been kind of neglecting this one. The best thing to do would be to come out here every morning and just collect those little gooey flowers. Um, but I haven't been doing that, and so they've just been going to seed, which is also beautiful to look at. You can see they just keep growing throughout the season. And you'll find a variety of these little buds. <laughs> and the seed pods. And what you really want is that kind of white looking sappy pod. But you'll take anything, anything that's pretty close to flowering. Maybe come out the next day and gather the newer ones that are now sapping. Okay, let's, let's get to kind of harvesting some of these things. Just gonna go straight into the jar this time. Getting the flowers. That one didn't go straight in the jar. Do a better job at that. Into the jar. You really want the little sappy ones, but also the full flower heads will do. They still have plenty of sap in there. Oh, I wish you could see. Probably can see. Try to look real close up at the this flower. You can see there's a lot of sap just on the side of the flower. So. Well, you want to get them at this perfect stage. This one, I think, was the most perfect one I've seen so far. Also, the flowering stage is fine. Even the leaves can be used. But I think the sap, the resinous sap, is what I'm really looking for in this. That's another good, juicy little blossom just ready to open. That's the stage you want to get it most definitely. Just going to go around and find these little opening buds, trim them into the jar as best I can. And the flowers. Look for the goo. Look at these guys, absolutely beautiful. Basically now, now it's very easy. We're gonna take some Everclear. Take some Everclear or the highest alcohol you can get in your state and just add that in there to make a tincture. Fill your jar almost the top. You have a tiny bit of space, but you want to make sure that your rim is completely free of any matter before you put the lid on. And as a tincture, you're going to want to let this sit for 
a couple weeks to a couple months at least before you strain it out and you can start using it yourself in formulas or even topically for poison oak. Um, remember, that's great for asthma, bronchitis, symphysema, problems of the respiratory tract that need expectorant. Uh, specifically, if there's heart conditions as well, that's really great. And um, also topically for uh, poison oak. And some preparations can be made for other rashes as well. But even a, a tincture of Grindelia. Now, with a couple other things, is really soothing for poison oak. It doesn't take it away right away, but it kind of dries it up, makes it feel a little less painful. There it is, Grindelia. Now that I've shown you how to make some wonderful medicine, I want to remind you that it's very important to go see a doctor or a naturopath or at least an herbalist before starting any herbals for your conditions. For one thing, you may not really understand what your diagnosis is. You may think it's just a little bit of this and that that can be treated with some plants when it's really something serious and you're missing it and it could, could be fatal. Um, also, there are interactions between herbs and drugs, and there's also contraindications between some of the problems you may be having and the herbs you may think you need. <laughs> so don't start taking anything willy-nilly unless you're sure what's going on. And to be sure, come see a naturopath like me. I'm in Portland, Oregon. I do house calls in the greater Portland area, and I also have an office in Milwaukee.